Hello, my name is Bara Hassan and I'm a paediatric trainee. Today we're going to talk about the newborn examination. The newborn examination is an important assessment done on all newborns by a trained healthcare professional. It is done for important reasons, ideally within the first 24 hours of life. It is then repeated at 6 to 8 weeks by their GP. The examination is used as a screening tool to identify any asymptomatic illnesses in the newborn. An adjunct to this being the Guthrie test, which we will not go into today but you should read up on. The examination also serves as an opportunity for health education and parental reassurance. Now before you start the examination, you should establish if the baby has a name and you should use the baby's name throughout your assessment. You should carefully inspect both maternal and baby notes and if possible you should go over some history with the parents. In the notes, you should take note of the baby's birth weight, length and any issues that have already been identified. APGAR scores, which is an important screening tool to identify a baby's general health at birth, should be noted. It is important to establish if there is any issues identified during mum's pregnancy and if any concerns were raised during antenatal scans or blood tests. You should ask about the birth history, what gestation this was at and what the mode of delivery was. You should ask about the maternal past medical history and establish any family or social history. It is important to ask about feeding. Is this baby formula fed or breastfed and how much are they taking? It is also very important important to ask about urine and meconium. Have they passed this within the first 24 hours? Remember, meconium is the tarry looking stool which is the first stool the baby passes following birth. You can then go on to examine the baby. This is the core part of most OSCE examinations. It is important that the baby is completely stripped for the assessment and you may wish to have the assistance of another healthcare professional at this point. Ideally, you will try and complete the full examination while the baby is quiet and settled. However, you may have to come back and complete it if the baby becomes unsettled. Like any paediatric examination, this is an opportunistic examination. There is no absolute correct way of completing it. It is useful, however, to take a top-to-toe approach in order not to miss things. Firstly, have a look at the baby from the end of the bed. What is their general posture like and what movements are they demonstrating? Have a look at their colour. Are they obviously jaundiced or pale looking? And have a look to see if there are any obvious skin marks, rashes or any obvious dysmorphic features. Going on to the physical examination, as mentioned earlier, we will start at the head. Have a look at the shape of the head and is there anything obviously unusual. Have a feel of suture lines and fontanelles and use this as an opportunity to measure their occipital frontal circumference. Taking the biggest of three readings. Have a look at their eyes and using an ophthalmoscope try and elicit a red reflex bilaterally. This excludes the potential diagnosis of congenital cataracts and rarely a retinoblastoma. Have a look at their nose and mouth. It is important at this point to exclude a cleft lip or palate. You can also test their suck reflex at this point asking the parents if it is okay for you to do this by placing a gloved finger inside the baby's mouth. Have a look at the size, position and shape of the ears. Do they have a mobile pinna and do they have a patent external auditory meatus? You can then go on and examine the baby's chest. Briefly have a look at their neck and feel the clavicles to ensure that there isn't a possible fracture which may occur during delivery. Have a look at the shape and movements of the chest with respiration. Have a listen for heart sounds and the possible presence of a murmur. Listen for air entry bilaterally into both lung fields. Use this as an opportunity to measure the heart and respiratory rate. Additionally, at this point, you may wish to measure peripheral oxygen saturations postductally by placing a probe on the baby's foot. This is a crucial part of your assessment and must be documented. Once you have completed this, you can go on and examine the abdomen. Inspect the abdomen for shape, obvious distension and look at the movements with respiration. Have a look at the condition of the umbilicus. Palpate the abdomen for any masses or inguinal or umbilical hernias. Auscultate for bowel sounds. Now move on to the groin and attempt to feel femoral pulses. This is a crucial part of your assessment and failure to feel femoral pulses may indicate an underlying cardiac defect such as coarctation of the aorta or even possibly critical aortic stenosis. Once you have done this, have a look at the external genitalia. Is your patient obviously a girl or a boy and if it's a boy, can you feel two testicles in the scrotum? From here, you should inspect the perineum and have a look at the anus, establishing whether the anus is patent and that it appears in a normal position. Position. You can then go on and examine the limbs. Have a look at the movements of all four limbs. Are they symmetrical? Count the number of digits on both hands and feet and have a look at the palms to determine the presence or absence of a single palmar crease. You can place a finger in the baby's palm to assess the presence of a grasp reflex. While examining the limbs, you should focus on the hips to exclude the potential diagnosis of developmental dysplasia of the hips. You do this by forming Barlow's and Ortolani's tests, remembering that Barlow's comes before Ortolani's. In this test, you are trying to see if you can read 
relocate an easily dislocatable hip. Feeling a click or a clunk may suggest a positive finding and should be followed up with an ultrasound, usually performed at around 6 weeks, and should also have an orthopaedic assessment. Turn the baby over in your hand and have a look at their spine, particularly looking at the curvature of the spine. Closely focus on the sacrum to exclude the possibility of spina bifida. Brief neurological assessment is also important. Assess tone while you're handling the baby and check their moral reflex. Looking at the response, you want to see that this response is symmetrical. It is important that you warn the parents before you do morals test as it may cause a bit of a fright. Once you have done this, you have completed the examination. You should plot their length, weight, occipital frontal circumference on a WHO growth chart. These are available from the WHO website or the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health. You should offer thanks to the parents and offer to redress the baby and hand the baby back. Describe your findings. In summary, the neonatal examination is a key and important screening examination done on all babies born in the UK. Although it is an opportunistic examination, try and be systematic going top to toe and be thorough. Remember, most babies born in the UK are healthy and you're sharing in a happy moment with two new parents and a new baby. If you like what we do, please subscribe.